Ciao guys, I'm Giulia, I'm Italian and I'm trolling Italy to give you the best local tips. If you would like to receive our recommendations for your future trips to Italy, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on. This video is dedicated to the best outdoor destinations and outdoor activities to do in Umbria, a small region in central Italy, also called the Lang of Italy, uh, not very much known by international travelers, probably because shadowed by nearby Tuscany. In our short itinerary, we will show you Marmore Waterfalls, Piediluco Lake, Nera Gorge, and Trasimeno Lake. Let's explore together. Marmore is the highest artificial waterfall in Europe with its 165 meters. When the Romans conquered this land, they found a huge swamp here created by River Velino. In 271 before Christ, they reclaimed the area by deviating the River Velino in the River Nera below with free jumps. That's how the waterfalls was born. A must stop here is the Lover's Balcony, but don't be tricked. Despite its romantic name, it's not really a romantic spot. I'm ready for the lover's balcony. It's the closest point you can get to the waterfall and that's the best way to get wet. Indeed here it seems like it's always raining. It's called the lover's balcony because an ancient local story tells that a shepherd called the Lino and a nymph called Nera lived here. They fell in love, but gods couldn't fall in love with humans. When Juno found out, she decided to punish Nera and transform her into a river. The shepherd tried to look for her for days, but couldn't find her. So in his desperation, he decided to throw himself in the river. Jupiter took pity of him and transformed him in another river that would rush every day into Nera river so that the two lovers could meet forever. Sporty people will enjoy this place. There are many things you can do. River walking, hydro speed, tubing, kayak and boat tours. We opted for rafting. Rafting here is a really adrenalinic and exciting experience. We highly recommend it. It departs just at the bottom of a waterfall where the water runs very fast. If you have never tried rafting before, you can also opt for a softer one in a less difficult spot through the river. The waterfall is also a great place for walking and trekking. There are four paths inside the park and two outside. They are sometimes steep, but are also worth the view. Path number one is not for the faint of heart. Indeed, there are 600 steps to go up, so good luck. If you come here during autumn, winter or spring, make sure to check the water's opening hours. Indeed, for most of the day, the flow rate of the water is reduced to be used in nearby hydroelectric factories. During summer, instead, the water is always at its maximum flow rate. Another suggestion, many people only take path number one, two and three because they are inside the park. But if you just cross the street, you will find the entrance to path number four, which is the farthest from the waterfalls, but also the one that has the best view on them. Indeed, from here, you can see all of it from the top to the bottom. it can be really tiring so if you want to chill out after that you can head to the nearby town of Piediluco and take a stroll on the lake with the same name Piediluco Lake. If you don't like to stop like us you can do some other activities like you, you can rent a paddle boat and explore the lake by yourself you can also rent a canoe or you can just decide not to do any more movements and take a boat tour around the lake. If you still have energies after that, uh, you can enjoy a beautiful panoramic view over the lake by climbing up to an ancient castle over the hill. Uh, it's a 45 minute walk. The Nera Gorge Path is a 6 km long itinerary that can be done by feet or by bike following the route of the river Nera. 
You can rent bikes at the beginning of a path in Narniscalo or you can walk. Nera Gorge is a relaxing and mesmerizing place, perfect to chill, also if you're traveling with kids. This spot was an unmissable stop for all the painters and artists that took the famous Grand Tour in Italy from Europe and from the United States two centuries ago. That bridge over there was and is a Roman bridge and it was tremendously high for the time. The first half survived until today, but the second half of the bridge uh, fell apart probably for an earthquake during the 11th century. As you're noticing, I'm not wearing a helmet and that's because in Italy, contrary to other European countries, it's not compulsory to wear a helmet while you're biking. So if you go to rent a bike, you gotta expressively ask for one, otherwise they will not give it to you. Along the path, you will see Stifone, a tiny little Roman village that used to be one of the ports of the imperial city. Ah, cinquantina, ok. Allora. Tra tutti si via. Si sta bene qua, lontano dal traffico. Eh, beh, via. Si sta bene. Si sta bene. Ma per tutto, se stai bene. È vero, quello è vero. Eh. Once there, you can also visit the nearby town of Narni. Funny fact. When writing the Chronicles of Narnia, C.S. Lewis opened an atlas, closed his eyes and pointed this tiny village on the map to find inspiration for a name of a fictional land of book. And what a nice little village Luck chose! Trasimeno Lake is halfway between Florence and Rome and less than 30 minutes away from Umbria's major city, Perugia. It is the largest lake in central Italy and the fourth largest in the entire nation. Here you may be far from the seaside, but you still have beaches and many water sports to try, like kayak, windsurf and sailing. It's also a great spot for trekking and Nordic walking. There is a circular path along the lake of 160 kilometers. Other activities to do around the area are horseback riding, quad riding and fishing tourism. Inside Trasimano Lake there are two islands that you can explore. Maggiore Island, still inhabited by 15 people, it's very peculiar because it's composed of one street with houses and restaurants and the rest is nature, and Polvese Island, today a savage and completely deserted land. The best towns to stop by on the lake are Castiglione del Lago, Passignano sul Trasimeno or San Feliciano, where many of the activities I just mentioned take place. Umbria is a spectacular Italian region full of nature and things to do. If you like their tips, give a like to this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Halfway between Florence and Rome, 